economics matters, but especially, you know, and I know it's a little exhaustive, but I wanted you to see the wording, and hopefully you picked up on it, as I already pointed out, that John 19 is making the reference to all of these things being fulfilled from a prophetic standpoint, from, you know, this had to happen, this had to happen, this had to happen. And when you look at verse number 28, we see a little bit in the Jesus mindset as he's being crucified, he's still doing the work of fulfilling the prophecy of God. And when you know, like Jesus knew what he had to do in his earthly ministry. So when he, from his baptism all the way through, all the works that he's doing, he's being guided through the Holy Ghost. He's being guided directly from the Father. And he knows what work he needs to do. And especially in John, you'll see many references to scriptures being fulfilled throughout the whole gospel, right? He's, he's healing people, he's doing all these things, and you'll find many places that the scripture might be fulfilled that says, in and, and all these places, and, and even the, you know, the, the disciples recounting, oh yeah, the scripture says this, and they're, and they're applying all these things to Christ, because Christ had to come as the Savior in the way that the Bible already prophesied he would come. So part of Jesus' work and his job is fulfilling the prophecy that came before. So he had to do all of the things that were already foretold that he would do. Jesus could not be killed, arrested, crucified, whatever, before his time. So multiple times when you're reading through the Old Testament, he's, or Old Testament, the, the, in, in the Gospels, you're going to see, like in, in, in John chapter 2, at the, the, at the marriage supper, right, when, uh, his, when Mary says, you know, to give them wine, or asking for wine, he says, you know, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour has not yet come. So, and that's a reference to his death, right? He's talking about the, the wine and, uh, and giving that. So he said, my hour has not yet come. He also said that, you know, he, he left a couple times, when there's a lot of heat coming on him, well, he, he went somewhere else because his hour was not yet come because it wasn't time for him to die yet. So when people were plotting and planning to kill him and when things were getting hot, when John the Baptist had his head cut off, he departs and goes somewhere else because it wasn't time for him to die yet. He still had work to get done. It couldn't happen out of order. He had to fulfill everything in order for his job to be done. He had a job to do on this earth. He had a mission to do on this earth and he had to complete that job before he could pass away before he could die, before he could give up the ghost. And the fact that John 19 is, is brings up that this scripture needs to be fulfilled, this scripture needs to be fulfilled, and then in, in verse 28 there says, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. So now it's like, okay, Jesus now knows. He sees everything that's happening. He knows the scriptures. He knows what needs to be fulfilled. And he's going, okay, check, check, check. You know, did this, did this, did this. Doing all the work. Now I know that all things were accomplished up to this point. He's gotten everything accomplished that needs to be accomplished. He says that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Why did he say I thirst? Because he needed to still fulfill the scriptures. That's why he said it, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He said, I thirst. He knew they were going to give him vinegar to drink. He didn't say I thirst expecting to get some water. He knew that the scripture needed to be fulfilled and he knew that this needed to happen. So he said, I thirst. He already had the foreknowledge in John 19 verse 28. I know that these things are all accomplished. I thirst. So then they can put up the vinegar unto him and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. All the symbolism of the, the Passover lamb and every, you know, there's, I'm not going to get into all those details of why that's so important. But it was important for him to have the hyssop and the, and the vinegar and receive it that way. And then at that moment, because that was the last thing he had to do, was to receive that. Verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, there was nothing more left for him to do on this earth to fulfill prophecy while he was alive. While he was alive. While he still had his life in him on this earth. He said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So what did Jesus mean when he said, it is finished? Everything that he had to do on his earthly ministry was finished. 
He fulfilled all the scriptures that needed to be fulfilled while he was alive. Now, did all of the scriptures at the moment he gave up the ghost, were they all fulfilled of the prophecy of Christ yet? No. There were still more prophecies that needed to be fulfilled. But everything that Jesus had an influence on or an impact on while he was alive of playing out his part and doing all these things, those were completed. Those were finished. It seems pretty clear from the context to me, because even then as you continue, there are things that happened that were outside of Jesus's control because the soldiers didn't break his legs, but that scripture still needed to be fulfilled. Right? But Jesus, there's no reason for him to be alive to fulfill that because he couldn't be alive for the fulfillment. Right? He had to already be dead. If he was still alive, in fact, that they would have broken his legs. So that would have made the scripture not be fulfilled. He had to give up the ghost in order for him to not remain on the cross with you know, having his bones broken. It's the only reason why they didn't break his legs is because he had already died. So they pierce his side, break, you know, didn't break his legs, which fulfills the scripture. So that moment of his death had to happen that way. 